Hi there, Gray again, here for another Gravity Rush video. It's been 8 years since the release of the first Gravity Rush and 3 years after the release of Gravity Rush 2, and apparently there are secrets and details in both games that players have missed during their playthroughs. Since there aren't a lot of videos about these interesting details and easter eggs, I decided to make one about it. Keep in mind that these are small details you probably missed or failed to notice in your playthroughs. So yeah, uh, with that out of the way, let's move on with the video. For those people who finished Raven's DLC, take a closer look at the last comic panel and pay close attention to the couple in the background. Do you recognize them? Well, if you've played the first game, you'll recognize them as Singlor and Nala from Gravity Rush 1. To give a brief summary on their story, Singlor is a scientist experimenting on gravitational fields and space-time, hoping that he could save Hexville from the darkness that will eventually destroy all of existence one day. But Singlor's efforts became a disaster when his wife, Nala, tampered with his machine and accidentally released artificial energy that transmitted them into a different space-time and dimension. We never get to really save Singlor and Nala from being stuck in distorted space-time in Gravity Rush 1. So how is that they are seen here in the end of Raven's DLC? The answers are pretty simple and there are two possibilities on how they were able to get out in distorted space-time. The first possibility is that because of Raven's actions to repair the fabric of reality in the course of the DLC, she may have indirectly saved them from being lost in space-time. The second possibility is that when Raven overwrote history, it's likely that Singlor and Nala's accident never happened, thus preventing them from being stuck in distorted reality. It's unclear how exactly Singlor and Nala are saved, but those two possibilities I mentioned are the likely scenarios. Did you know you can actually touch Cat in Gravity Rush 1? In the original PS Vita version, you can touch Cat by tapping the screen of the PS Vita. In the PS4 version, tapping the touchpad will cause Cat to jolt and feel anxious as if someone is actually poking her. Sadly, this is no longer possible in Gravity Rush 2 since the touchpad is now used for switching gravity styles. Have you ever come across this rainbow in Jirga Paralao or in Hexville? It's not really an easter egg or a secret, but I just thought I'd share this with you because it's so rare for this rainbow to show up in the game. And yes, this rainbow can also happen in real life. So this phenomenon is called a full circle rainbow, and just like in the game, this is a very rare sight to see. And usually aircraft pilots are the ones who see these types of rainbows. So just some quick facts for you. To see a full circled rainbow, you need to be able to see water droplets below your observable horizon. Meaning if you are on the ground, you are very unlikely to be in the best spot to see a full circle rainbow. But if you are standing on top of a tall building or looking out of an aircraft, then you may have water droplets and sunlight below your observation point and that can form a full circle rainbow. So yeah. Have you ever noticed this symbol on top of the Orthodox Church in Old Noir? This symbol on top of the church is seen in both Gravity Rush games, and if you've played the Siren games, then you may recognize this symbol. This is actually the Mana Cult symbol that is seen throughout the first Siren game, and this easter egg pays homage to the previous works of the devs. The only difference in both games is that you can actually destroy the Mana Cross by hitting it with a gravity kick in Gravity Rush 2. I've never really played any of the Siren games myself, but what I do know is that the game also has a niche audience, and it's a very underrated game too. I think it's really nice for the devs to make a small reference to their previous works, which were also cult classics, like the Siren games for example. And uh, hopefully one day we'll see the Siren franchise make a return for next-gen consoles. Since we're already at the church, did you know you can ring the church bell using a stasis field, or just by simply kicking it in Gravity Rush 2? You can also ring another bell located on top of Venta Center's clock tower by performing a gravity kick. Again, it's not much, but maybe that is something you missed while playing the game. 
Did you know that the mechanical clock located at Lake Kolmosna above the Overlook Plaza Fountain Manhole is synced to the clock of your PS4? At midnight or 12pm, the clock will open and the mechanical goat head will come out and breathe fire while making a gong sound. The goat also appears at every quarter hour but doesn't breathe fire. So this is what it looks like or this is what it sounds like at 12 midnight. Okay, this event is actually a pretty rare sight to see in the game. Thankfully, I was able to find footage from another YouTuber called Allura White. Occasionally, fireworks will be set off in the Plejun or the entertainment district near where the Ferris wheel is at. You can also see groups of people behind the Ferris wheel setting up fireworks and launching them to the air. If you attempt to shift towards the fireworks explosion, Cat will stop and cry out as if she's taking damage but no damage will actually be taken. This event is so rare that it's unknown how to exactly trigger it. So to Allura White who was able to get footage of this, you're a time saver and you deserve some love from the community. I'll leave a link to his video down in the description. You probably know this already, but doing certain emotes to NPCs in the game will elicit your reaction, but did you know that greeting a Grigo will greet you back by blinking twice? I included that in the video because I think it's pretty cute, and it's nice that even the non-human NPCs can respond to your gestures. Did you know that the relaxed gesture has two variations? The relaxed gesture is also the only gesture with an animation dependent on the outfit that Cat is wearing. So it means if Cat is wearing anything with a skirt, she will stand and stretch, but if you are wearing an outfit without a skirt, you'll get the standard sitting animation for the gesture. In Raddale Memorial Park, there is a gravestone that serves as a tribute to a dev that passed away. His name is Norihiko Takami, who worked as a stage designer for Siren Blood Curse, lead stage artist for Puppeteer, and one of the environment modelers for Gravity Rush 2. Every year on August 10, flowers bloom around the memorial. The three symbols you see in the gravestone represents the games that he worked on. The Mana Cross represents Siren Blood Curse, the scissors represent Puppeteer, and the apple is for Gravity Rush. I think not a lot of players know this, so I decided to include this one as well. It's also nice to see that his fellow colleagues immortalized him by putting a memorial of him in Gravity Rush 2. I'm not sure how many of you ever used the Breeder Talisman, but did you know that when you equip it, not only will dogs follow you around, but they will also face the direction where you point your finger at by using the point up gesture. It's not much, but that could be something you may have missed in the game. Last but definitely not least, have you ever wondered whatever happened to the rest of the missing orphans that were mentioned in Gravity Rush Overture? If you don't know what I'm talking about, in the second part of the animated short of Gravity Rush, Cat and Raven were involved in an investigation regarding the orphans in Hexville that have suddenly gone missing, and the orphans were never really mentioned again until the near end of Gravity Rush 2 after you deal with Dr. Brahman and defeated Kali for good. After the fight with Kali, head to Arquebus Academy and find Chaz. He will then give you closure to what happened to the missing orphans. Chaz mentions that when they investigated Dr. Brahman's airboat, they found several bodies belonging to children and most likely these were the missing orphans that they were investigating. So yeah, that is pretty dark for a game like Gravity Rush and I hope this bought some closure for those players that wanted to know what happened to the missing orphans. Here's a bonus for you. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but did you ever take a closer look at the manhole covers that are scattered throughout Hexville? The design of these covers bears a striking resemblance to Silent Hill's seal of Metatron. I decided to include this in the video not just because it's a callback from the devs previous work, but also because a lot of us use these manholes for fast travel and yet many of us don't realize that it's an easter egg hidden in plain sight, which is pretty cool. 
So those are the 12 things you may have missed while playing Gravity Rush 1 and 2. Thank you for watching until the very end and I hope you give it a like. Check out my previous Gravity Rush video where I explain the world's origin if you're interested. I know there are more hidden things or hidden details in the game that I failed to mention, so if you know any secrets or hidden details, please comment down below and maybe I'll make a follow-up video. Thanks again for watching, subscribe to DGTV for more gaming content, and as always, this is Dre, and I'll see you when I see you. Take care.